Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dan Lucio Questions, uh, episode 446. Um, each week we meet here to um, review uh, the questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have David Rosem. David is a leading internet marketer. He's based in the sunny uh, um, um, area of... Um... Uh, grey, <laughs> grey, threatening to... To rain. West Sussex, um, West Sussex um, Prince Harry's uh, uh, the, the Duke of Sussex, is he or not? Yeah, he lives around the corner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we have, oh, you can find David at um, David at Chameleon Marketing. Marketing. David, David at DavidRosen.com. I beg your pardon? How about davidrosen.com? Yeah, davidrosen.com and davidrosen.com. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tanaki Wasa is based uh, in Wimbledon. Um, and uh, Mr. Taki is a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. All right, so our, our, our first question tonight, uh, let me see, let me check this button. Um, oh, I can't remember what, what we do here. Um, Have you tried unplugging it and plugging it in again? Oh, don't break me. <laughs> um, oh, dear. Have they changed it all again? Well, it, 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 it seems to be different. I, I don't know. With my my brain, it, it could be anything. Um, anyway, look, let's go ahead and while we're uh, discussing this question, um, we, uh, we'll get it up on the screen very shortly. Um, this one is, it's a question from George Mulford. Um, it, he said, I had to shut the store down and I've lost all ranking. George said, uh, hello, everyone. Um, dumb question incoming. I have an e-commerce store that was ranking fourth page for one set of targeted keywords um, without any effort to rank. I had to shut the store down and I've lost all ranking. It seems... Uh, um, Lost all ranking, it seems, since it's come back online. Um, and um, he said, I'm ready to invest some time in getting my ranking back uh, and even higher than the fourth page. I'm overwhelmed about what to do next and presume that I'm overthinking it. As long as my site, um, which is uh, built on Shopify, um, is properly organised, should I just try and gather as many quality backlinks as possible. And he said, apologies for what I presume may be a simple question, um, but being self-taught in all of this, uh, it can be confusing to know if I'm overthinking or not. The, the first question I, I have is, is not so much what you should do Next, um, I think we need to get uh, to look back over what's actually happened so far. You've taken a store down, you say the store down, and you've lost all ranking. Now, what did you put up? How is, is this the same store with a different brand on it? Has it got the same content? Was your previous site on Shopify? Um, I'm not sure how you got here. Um, if you just, if it was similar, uh, if it was, uh, sorry, if it was the same site on, with the same structure, um, and you've only just put it up, then I suspect that things will get back to where they were before. 
Um, but is the fact that you had a previous site that's not really very much to do with the site you've just put up on Shopify, uh, how that was ranking doesn't really have that much to do with how this new site is ranking, if you see what I mean. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, ah, Jim and Rose joined. Yes. I found the wrong button. Ah, good. 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 Uh, I like pressing your button too. Ho, 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 ho. Um, not in that way. Um, yeah. So um, I noticed that Christine has gone and said, do an audit. If this is very different from your previous site, yes, go down the audit road. Um, if it's the same site, I would wait a bit longer before I start auditing. Yeah, no, I mean, the thing is that there's various reasons why a site goes off the air and it could be uh, just a, um, a mistake that's been made. It, it could be any number of things. But Google will punish you for uh, not being available and uh, it uh, takes... Um, around about the same time as it was off the air um, to, to bring it back um, to, to where it was. Um, it's nothing to be concerned about. It's just, you imagine Google doesn't want to be publishing links, um, URLs where uh, there is nothing available or a 404, particularly a 404, they're the first to go. Um, but. Yeah, it, it's just normal. Just go back to do doing what you're doing. Makes sense. Um, did I make sense, David? Yes, I, th I think you you said what I said, didn't you? Well, you well, trying to say well, what I was saying? Um, the, the the other thing I, I should say, or I'd like to say, maybe not should say, but I'd like to say, um, is. Um, as long as my Shopify is properly organized, should I just try and gather as many quality backlinks as possible? No investing content. Yeah, that's exactly right. All right, have we done enough for this one? Unless Masataki has something to say. Yep, I have. Nope. I think, I think it's been right. covered. Thank you, Mas. Um, assigning the right primary keyword is the title of uh, this one from Al Bakito. Um, he goes on to say, okay, on what basis do I assign my product page the right primary keyword? Um, declining difficulty, highest search volume, balanced out, latent semantic indexing. Bonus question, when getting backlinks, uh, are, are they uh, any Anchor t are there any anchor text thumb rules I should follow? Like it, it should contain one of the secondary keywords or just the primary. Okay. I think it, it, it's easy to become fixated on um keywords and um it, 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 it it's easy to lose sight of um what our job is and our, our job is to, is to provide um uh, <laughs> it is to provide answers to questions yeah yeah, thanks. I, I, like, I like to think of searches as questions. Um, and I like to think of what we put on a website as answer to questions. Um, and to go back to <coughs> SEO um, terminology, um, we should think about searcher intent. What are people actually wanting? Um, your keywords. Um, your content, your keywords, your themes should um, should aim to develop a piece of, of content that answers that, that question, that answers uh, the, uh, the search and the searcher intent. 
um i always think there's there's something sort of very kind of dead and and numeric about this form of um of approaching content and keyword research you need to you need to get the person you need to get the person that you're providing content to into the equation you need to think about how this how this works for someone who might come to your site and how it might get someone to your site um and i believe that's what google is is trying to do it's trying to understand um content that will help people um so i think that that that's what you've got you've got to stop thinking just about this numeric mechanistic idea of seo and put people in it yeah and i mean let's start from what you're actually trying to do on the product page i suppose you're trying to sell it that's the ultimate aim that's what the page is for that's what your business is for so let's start from there the primary keyword is going to be the product and how people interact with that product so why are people looking for that product what problems does the product solve why would someone want to buy it and why would someone want to buy it from you and not elsewhere these are the things that you need to think about. I mean, so you rank for secondary keyword, which brings absolutely no leads, no sales. What's the point of that? Yeah. Okay. Let's go to number three on our run list. Gerard Singh asked the question title, I have four different Google My Business listings location wise uh, in a city. Uh, he says, my dental client has four different Google My Business listings, brackets, location wise in a city. What's the best search engine optimization strategy to start in order to rank um, that for Google My Business listings uh, on their specific location? All GMBs are authentic and have lots of reviews. Any tips to rank them on their specific um, locations? Um, Tim, who's a Google product expert, um, um in, on on the uh, WCO questions uh, community and the google my business uh, um, community um he said um profiles link to um a group uh, sorry profiles link to the location pages you also want to get those to rank locally uh, in organic search too um, the original Google um, profile that uh, can remain linked to the homepage, uh, and he's assuming that it is. Um, and then next, to uh, update local citations, um, the product and service on listings. Check your primary and secondary categories against competitive profiles in the three pack. And structured data on location pages for medical local business. I need a doctor after that. Well, I think Tim's covered everything. Did we lose David or we, we, um, did Tim just arrive? No, Tim isn't. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just um, replay that um, and then we'll move on. Um, you could back in if, if Tim has uh, put it here, uh, Gaurav, um, you can back it in. You're on a winner. All right, that's um, 
מזון. שיוון שבאוויג'ה, אז קוראים את הטייטל, פליק תרו רשיו איז לואו, אבן אפטר אגוד רנקינג אנד אימפרשן. שיוון שוויון אוטו סי, אני סטרגלינג טו אנדרסטנד וואי, פליק תרו רשיו איז לואו, אבן אפטר אגוד רנקינג אנד אימפרשן. קן אין 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 or any suggestion for improving the click-through ratio. Feel free to ask for more information if required to answer this question. My site is visadeco.com. Um, and let's scroll up and see if our oh, Christine Hansen um, has answered here. Well, I stop this when it gets to the top, um, guys. Um, any, does anyone want to have a, a, a look at this question? Um, yeah, this, 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 I think this goes quite, uh, fits quite happily with our uh, signing the right primary keyword earlier. This is, this is about um, how a piece of high ranking, um, content does not engage with people um you might have the right content here but you may have failed to write a um a headline that um that hooked people's attention you may have written um a meta description tag that doesn't invite people to read it um you know maybe you need to, to step back entirely and think you know have you written a piece that your your customers um let's assume you have customers um will want to want to see it's it's down to this providing something that people want at the moment this is ranking highly but it's not being seen by those sets of eyeballs that see it as something that that should be read so they should go further than seeing the the result um on, on the serps so you've got two things here have you have you created something that people want to will want to read it would it be something useful to them if you believe that is the case then you start tweaking your headlines um your description um yeah your message description title maybe um you know try to make them try to sell this as a piece of content that someone is worth uh, that, that this this piece of content is worth someone spending their time their valuable time um reading because if you don't sell it then people won't uh, won't go and read it and your click through rate will be low Thank you, David. Well, part of the, <laughs> another thing is we don't know the figures, so we don't know what the expectations are. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Or positions, so we don't know where exactly um, the site is ranking, or what search terms. Mm. And. I yeah, just had a look at the site. It's very much a hodgepodge of content. Um, hmm. It's also fantastically slow um, here. I don't know whether it's fantastically slow anywhere else, but it's taken what seemed to be hours for the uh, images to to turn up. the images uh, to turn up images to appear on the uh on visa deco the website visa deco.com oh i'm sorry yes okay i nearly died i thought you meant the WCO questions platform was dead oh i didn't say it was dead i just said it was um not in the greatest of health <laughs> Uh, and it is being Visa Deco, not dumb SEO questions, because that yeah. is 
that wouldn't be as dumb as that would it um so yeah um i imagine it's not as slow as it seems otherwise it wouldn't have high rankings but um uh yeah it's um hmm. yeah i think uh i think having seen this i'm gonna uh, agree with massa that um i'd have to know what high rankings and what ca uh, and what key phrases, et cetera, et cetera, before um, even, well, no, I asked it quite once before, but it, it, that might not be the whole, uh, the whole story. Right. I'll tell you, here's a, a good answer um, on the Damasio Questions Facebook group um, from Angeli uh, Marie. I, I won't uh, read it out uh, because we still have another 10 questions oh. to go. but um it can be seen on the um uh, Damasio questions facebook group um yeah excellent thank you angeli marie she, she said what i said but better <laughs> well the, this could be true <laughs> yeah yeah uh, uh, and, I, I wish uh, I said it in the same way. Okay, is that a, a gender, a, a feminine gender, is it, Angeli? I don't know. Uh, it sounds kind of feminine, but I may be entirely wrong. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, so I apologise if I got Angeli's um, uh, gender wrong. No problem. Um, SOP, what, what is that? Um, Standard operating pr procedure in my part of the world, but uh, I don't know if that's the SOP here. <laughs> okay. Um, no, here's number five on our run list. Um, I've been following a particular SOP um, for local SEO campaigns. Um, brackets reposting from another group because I didn't get any responses. Um, well, thank you for thinking of us. Um, so Anjali said, um, so I've been following a particular SOP for local SEO campaigns um, and building business sites according to it. It has worked great so far for rankings. Um, but there's one question uh, that is perturbing me. Do I place my Google business profile, business site link in the website section of the um, Google business profile, or do I place the actual WordPress URL? Having the former may help with lo local rankings, um but um it it might uh, also um affect conversions i've seen websites that i've modeled after um, do both and they both seem to rank pretty well uh if i should just use wordpress url what do i even do with the business site uh, besides having it solely for seo purposes Hmm. I, um, hmm. I would say almost certainly your WordPress URL because um, that is probably the site that you put most of your effort into. Um, most um, business uh, Google business sites are pretty thin at most, um, so assuming that you've uh, built a, a WordPress site because you want something more than you can put on your uh, your GBP business site, um, I would say your WordPress site. But as, I, as I'm talking, I'm trying to read, and I notice that uh, there are some good points here that seem to say point the, um, point the people at the, point the URL at 
the site that you want them to read. And that is um, another way of saying the same thing, but uh, possibly better. And we've just been joined by the inimitable. Yes. Yes, I've probably been waffling over um, a, a, a Tim question or a question that Tim is better equipped than me to answer. How are you, Tim? Yeah, yeah. How's everyone? I'm good. Thank you. Good, good. Yep. Okay, we're, we, we've, we're five questions in, Tim. I've uh, got 10 to go. Um, let me see. I was looking at, at, um, at on, on the WCA Questions Facebook group, uh, I see Stockbridge uh, Truslow uh, was um, mentioning uh, the number of words per minute that he types. And I think it's something like a hundred or more. I, I, I'm just having a look to see if it was there. Um, but anyway, some amazing, amazing amounts. Um, mm. Right, let's rock on to number six on our run list from Stefan Prohichny, titled Using two or, more two or More Versions of the Same Content on the Website, um, which doesn't make so much sense to me. Um, Stefan said, hi, everyone. I have a dumb question about using two or more versions of the same content on the website. I know about canonicals, duplication, and cannibalization. Um, the question is, if it's possible to have the same content uh, on two different pages and get both of them ranking. The href lang tag is not an option as it's the same text, even if targeted to different countries. Well, like why do you have the same text? I mean, like, what's the, oh, yeah, with the. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this, this seems to be templates that sold to different, um, different clients. So they put their own name into standard templated content. Um, well, um, so why have they put the same content in? To make it easy. No, make no, no. Easy what stuff. I mean is, why had these two different ones got the same content appearing? Because, like, I understand two templates that the client, that each company would add their own individual unique copy into. But why is it? Why is two pages exactly the same? Yeah, and you've asked why, Tim, and uh, David so, asked why. So, if, has asked why. so <laughs> basically, if he's got this template kind of stuff, it shouldn't be live until it's uniquely filled in. Mm -hmm. Or else you've got empty pages, essentially. Forget your, forget your template, like your body copy, your head, like uh, recommended uh, whatever for this and then you've got your so same your same footer and blah, blah, blah if it's not live without any unique content in it doesn't go live right once the company has filled in their details and a, and you know when you put in there when they start filling in they need to give you at least uh, you know give them some ideas introduction to the business why is this business unique uh what do they offer um uh, whatever but it needs to be you know they need to have a minimum minimum amount of information about them and if it's templated like that google understands like if you think of um uh jeans on a uh, fashion webs on a fashion site where the category is jeans every single freaking product is essentially jeans and the templates the same uh, just the small different body copy and image and, and title of it. Like you need to, you know, Google understands like w when stuff is site-wide like this, but 
don't put it live if there's nothing in it like if it's essentially just a blank template it shouldn't be live and don't put it live either just with the guy's name like uh, xyz learning solutions and uh pink fluffy primary learning solutions like don't put it live if that's all that's in there you know you need to if you need to be stringent uh, this is your this is your i don't know whether you've got a directory or whatever the hell you are but you know you need to be stringent because at the end of the day if people are coming to you for information and advice they want information and advice on these learning providers right if you're not providing learning providers you're not going to be providing anything to them anyway so be stringent and if you've already populated stuff like this then start emailing them saying you know it help us help you we need some information about you send them a blank template in in wordpress i'm uh, sorry in, in in word doc give them some tempting like a uh, idea formatting you know sections that you want uh, how long have you been in business um how did the company start um what are your what are your core objectives with your product uh, things like this yeah get strict thank you tim brilliant right then let's go to number seven on our run list and it is uh, from tim brownson it's titled how do you stop content from being diluted it's pretty much the same as the other one too um a few years ago based on the, the back of stuff being published by brian dean and i think possibly glenn also i dropped my blogging frequency down to avoid watering my content down this rings a bell I, i'm not, not sure if we didn't cover this last week um Instead, I, I um, opted uh, for uh, longer in-depth posts and sent the shorter stuff uh, straight to my list. In all honesty, I've taken my eye off the SEO ball uh, because I've been so busy, but I, I am seeing my site slide in the rankings and was wondering if this tactic is no longer wise or even uh, was it ever really wise. Um, and a follow-up question, if going back to more content is better, then how do you stop content from being diluted? Uh, is it simply enough to simply link from the smaller posts to cornerstone content that has more depth? Don't fight over this one. I think the um, I think the the stuff about um, diluting your content through um, publishing more often um, sounds a bit wonky to me. Um, I think it's a, I think it's flipping the other way. It's uh, allocating the same amount of time to produce single pieces that are of um more that is more that are more likely to to rank because they are more complete than the the bits and pieces um generally the i think the the figures still back this up the data still backs this up that the um the higher ranking pieces tend to be long they tend to be in the thousands of words rather than the hundreds of, th of words that traditionally people think a, a blog post should be um stockbridge has um said some interesting things here um i scanned it i didn't read it properly so i'm not going to attempt to um really um summarize it but he he's saying that um by by writing a number of shorter um and in interconnected pieces uh google may uh, rank those just as well um, as the longer, more um, comprehensive pieces. As I say, I think the um, the figures still um, bear out that Google has a a liking for longer pieces. Um, 
but I can't contradict what Stockbridge uh, says. Uh, if he's if he's been successful with this, then I that's great. I'm going to have to try it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends on the audience, doesn't it? If the main audience consists of people who are happy to read something that's quite long, then you know a big piece would be fine. But if you are aiming at people whose attention span is essentially that of a goldfish on crack, then you have to keep it short. You know, if you like, it's a bit like TikTok. You have to really get the message across in seconds rather than minutes. That's fine as long as Google has also got a short attention span for that sort of topic. I think it really depends on the topic and the audience. I mean, if people are looking for really quick answers for something, you know, a single point of information, and that's what people are looking for, then providing that as quickly as possible, as swiftly as possible, that's the main thing. If people are trying to understand why something happens or, you know, trying to dig deeper into a topic, then you want to have a long form content. I think the thing is, um, or one of the things might be that uh, that Google's Google has been going on about passage, passage indexing for a while. Uh, in other words, finding um, a piece that, a piece of co content in uh, a page uh, that answers a particular question. Um, and in that case, once Google gets that working the way I understand it, it won't matter whether you have a, a long or a short piece. It'll be purely down to how well it, um, how well your uh, piece or section of a piece answers a question. True. Um, I mean, it always happens, doesn't it? If you search for something, it will jump to that section. Mm. Um, so that's already happening. It is. It's happening, but it's not. You know, it's still got a way to go. Yeah, yeah. I think. I mean, yeah. I mean, it depends. Again, if you if the page is quite heavy, you know, if it's just text, then it doesn't really matter. But if the page has a lot of embedded elements, you know, images, videos, things like that, then um, you know having a very big page long page might make it heavier so that's something to think about as well um but i think if the information is structured in a way so that you know let's say you, you know you have an introduction then you have um you know a few chapters if you like that are of reasonable length that might work better than having it all in one page Okay, so have we covered number number seven? Okay, here's number eight. So it's from Penzila um, Ashraf. It's titled "Google My Business for a Local Multi Vendor E Commerce Website." Penzila goes on to say, yeah, "Do you or ask? Yeah, do you recommend creating a Google My Business for a local?" A multi vendor e commerce website which has um, 9,000 plus um, SKUs. Uh, well, the, the, the basic thing is, is firstly, that's against guidelines because it's, um, you, you know, you're online, you, you don't have a location. Um, so it's against guidelines for an online only business. Uh, yep. Okay. All right, let's um, go now to number nine. Kath J.P. Quee 
Salim. Um, title putting two links to the home page on every uh, web page. Um, is putting two links, uh, one as anchor text, one as a button to the home page on every web page of the website a good strategy or it's not recommended? Um, I see Michael Borzakowski, um, he said it will have no negative impact on search engine optimization. And uh, we're, we're going to accept that as uh, exactly right. Um, and uh, Kath said, uh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in a sense, I have the opposite question. Why wouldn't you have link <laughs> page? I mean, mm. most people are, you know, when they go to website, they're used to, you know, clicking on a logo or something to go to the home page so you know in a sense i have that opposite question okay let, let's um, move along now to number 10 we're ripping through these um number 10 is another one from um Tanzilla. um it's titled Keyword Golden Ratio Technique. Never heard of it. Um, but anyway, um, does the Keyword Golden Ratio Technique work to get good traffic for new websites? Has anyone here used this technique? This technique um, I stumbled across a few years back. Um, it's uh, one of these things that someone has invented um, and pitches as something to um, invest in his uh, courses in uh, in doing it. Um, if I remember correctly, it involves uh, a lot of collecting data and sticking into spreadsheets and computing these keyword golden ratios. Um, I, <laughs> Bert and Daniel say sometimes, um, yeah, I suppose it works sometimes, um, but it, it's really just a, um, it's just a, a, a business uh, that someone has dreamt up, um, um, given a, um, a name that sounds as if it's, uh, it should deliver you gold and money and frankincense and myrrh. No, um, gold um no i haven't used it um i was deeply suspicious of it when i read it uh when i read about it um but i can't remember very much about it except what i've just said um yeah i suppose sometimes it may work by chance <laughs> yeah but <laughs> is it working inverted commas um, because of it, or well, it's totally irrelevant, and it's ranking because of other factors. Who knows? Yep. Um, there. Uh, if we had a dollar for every scheme that uh, we stumbled across, um, how how rich would we be, David? Anyway. Yes. Yes. Well, that's the thing. I'm assuming. I'm assuming to have some amount of keyword freaking ratio in there you've got to have x amount of content it's in itself and therefore you're writing a pretty good piece of content to in order for you not to be going like just repeat keywords in multiple different ways you are actually having to write a, a decent piece of content and it's like massa said well what's actually working this keyword ratio or actually the content you've written in the first place it's, yeah i i may be entirely wrong about this it was a long time since i i read it but i have a feeling it was to do with um the one of the one of the figures in the ratio was the number of results that google um told you it had for each uh each key phrase search but 
I may be entirely wrong, but I have a feeling that was part of it. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to do this question 11 in reverse because I, I think it really needs to be um, um, spelled out clearly. And so I congratulate Ryan Wesley for his uh, comment. He said um, it, the title of the question is uh, uh, Click Through Ratio Bots Really Beneficial for Boosting S. EO or search engine optimization. Um, and Ryan said, as for bots, they are a waste. I've tried a SERP Click, SERP Empire, and a few others. Uh, what I have seen was even if it would trick Google Search Console to view as a click, but Google can spot the difference. Um, the total waste of money, unless you can get real people to naturally click, um, but their metrics for analysing those is so advanced um, that it's difficult. And I'd add real people naturally clicking um, as a um, uh, a downer as well. Um, the many many third world countries have um, click farms. Um, where people who don't even know what they're clicking or what language they aren't even conversant in that language, clicking um, to do, do it. And um, I have had some experience finding um, websites actually penalised for using that click farm, click farm uh, uh, traffic. Um, any other... Um, I, I just felt I, I, I just wanted to make sure that we covered this one and said no. Yeah, automated automated stuff like that's a waste of time. Um, on well, the flip am side, I understand? Sorry. On, on, the, on the flip side, you can actually uh, like even the human, but there are you know you can set up projects where you dictate to every hundred user where they're going to be logging in from, what country they're coming from, what steps they're going to be searching for. You can, you can create. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, in some affiliate sites, you know, if you have the human user doing it over time and you set specific goals uh, where they enter from, what they're searching for, where they're clicking through to, what page you know different pages different things very well thought out um i have seen an affiliate site with nothing else done to it except this and i'm talking that what i'm talking about you pay for humans yeah not cheap yeah we're talking in the tens of thousands with a properly thought out product um and i've seen i've seen it work but then again based on the affiliate site it's making half a million so uh, it does work but the, you're using proper humans who not just that 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 you know they have a set form to work through it's created across multiple multiple you know it's not just to the home page it's across multiple things it's different paths different search queries different entries how long they're doing where they're clicking through once they've clicked through to that where they're exiting from it's a full-on plan it's not just chuck in your thing and pay 50 bucks it's none of that thank you tim that's right. interesting but uh i mean how would you exclude those from this you know from your stats uh you wouldn't this is it's just purely pure pure manipulation mm. so it's pure manipulation uh and then as 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 it builds because these are seen as real people um search queries it's becoming popular um and then of course other real humans start finding it and other real humans start purchasing you you, you can't exclude it um, I guess I suppose if you, uh, 
I suppose you could work it into your analytics in the sense of if it starts on this page and then moves to the secondary page, exclude that because that's the set you set for a hundred people to do. But I don't know. But you you can't. But it's pure manipulation to get things going. I'm not saying like all day long because once you've <laughs> once you've built up the site enough, it's running on its own. This is sort of just to get things headed in the right direction. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's roll on to number 12. Will Google get angry with me? Uh, Cheryl Daniels um, get, went on to ask, um, need advice, please. Will Google get angry with me if I make changes to my pages weekly and resubmit to Google Weekly for re-indexing? How often is safe? Thanks. Well, it's like if you're just updating the page because it's, I don't know, uh, the price of Bitcoin and you're updating it weekly, it doesn't matter. Just update it, right? Um, Google will come along and re-index it when it comes along. If you actually physically change in the URL, like as in this entire page changes weekly and you're like, wanting it to be re-indexed that's that's just bad that's that's very very bad um because google is not going to find your stuff on a weekly basis um the only the only kind of things it finds on a weekly basis are authority authoritative newsworthy something that it wants to visit on a weekly basis um uh, based on your question, Cheryl, and I'm not being derogatory, uh, uh, probably Google doesn't visit your site or at least visit a page, maybe once a month. So like doing that is, if it's completely changing, bad, bad idea. Um, and Jesus, if you're gonna be 301 redirecting, no, even worse of a freaking idea because like i mean do yourself a favor have a quick look at at the thing check on a page when how google's how often google has actually visited a submitted page because if it's something like um you know a standalone piece of content that they may index it and and, and not come back to that for for months on time and you can check in your discovery log also or when you're in, in in you know in search console um so you may have if you're doing three or so you may change it update to 301 redirect change it update 301 redirect it it may have you may have chucked in eight nine ten of these being 10 weeks right before google even comes back to the very original page and finds that one redirect he in the meantime he hasn't found all those other ones you created in 301 redirected so essentially, you've just created nine dead pages anyway, which you are then 301 redirecting to whatever hell. And he will never discover those pages anyway. Like, you know, just come on. Yeah, an administrative nightmare. Anyway, will we go on to the next? Going to take that as a vote for yes. Um, and question 13 is it worth doing alt text um, on all products? Yes, it is. So Nicholas Johnson went on to say, uh, is it worth doing alt text on all products? Or better to put that uh, time into adding more products uh, on an e commerce site? Um, you go ahead, Tim. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, products. I mean, you must have searched yourself, uh, Nicholas. You're searching for a product. You generally have, obviously, now that's to do with Merchant Center, but you have, you know, your shopping carousel, and then depending on the query, you may have a whole stack of images. You know, um, and if you're not 
properly defining your, your you know your old text um like gray sofa is the, the file name gray but your your old text is gray two seated or corner you know what i mean in whatever fabric yeah um which is going to give context to the whole thing and have your image discovered properly um, i mean it will discover it over time and figure it out but why not give that additional information also i don't know if you've noticed but there are a shed load of companies and organizations in countries that do have disability discrimination acts taking businesses to court left right and center big companies now because they're not providing um uh they're not complying with uh discrimination in the sense of for visually impaired um people which is where old text was originally designed for uh so if people have screen readers um it reads the alt text which then reads that as a screen reader to the person like that's what it was originally for and um, i don't it, it's happening it's like i mean in this 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 year alone and I'm, i mean i think i think i've read four different cases being brought against um e-commerce large e-com i mean i don't know like if you're a big brand name they tend to go after the big brand names as an example um but you know at some point you may be and then you're facing let you know so just do it you know start like the way the way i approach these things is if you're adding product on a regular basis start now on those new ones that get added from today moving forward do them properly and then set sections within the site as a as x amount of hours and you know uh whether the team or the in-house team or whoever you got and then move back within so start today properly on anything moving forward and then work your way set it break it out in sections and then and then that way you it's not like massive it's not out of control and you can just move your way through excellent thank you tim all right, let's go to number 14 on our run list. Um, Ryan Treviso asked the question titled, uh, is it good to put up a coming soon page? Um, when building a site, is it good to put up a coming soon page with some of the company information as in name, address, phone number, as it is on Google? And would you index it? Um, and if so, you would have to re-index it once you're done building the page the way you want. Thank you. Um, well, if it's just a coming soon, ugh, fuck, really, what's the point? Um, if you are doing something where, you know, like a lot of companies will, uh, have launches, pre-launches, incentivizations, you know, things like this. If it's a gym, sign up now, you know, we're not quite ready, blah, blah, blah. Yes, then it's worth having a page, not coming soon, but it's worth having a site that's live, even if it's one page, where you're explaining what's going on, when's the launch date, you know, when's the shop going to be ready, when a pre-order is going to be available, when is uh, i don't know when is walking going to be available uh can you shop online or where can people get the products or give them a nice selection of products coming and a sign up for to inform them when the actual launch date is or when you know or would you be interested in purchasing this product or whatever the case may be but a coming soon page just for the sake of a coming soon page now nah, forget it but if you're going to have you know if, if you're doing some uh, like traditional marketing and advertising, radio, uh, leaf, leaflet drops, newspaper, press releases, you know, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I, th I think that's the key point. Um, it's not going to do you any any, uh, any good in search, um, having that one page there. But if, if you've got some kind of awareness or some kind of... Um, 
offline advertising or promotion going on um then yes you know for for example um the the site is taken longer to to build than you thought and you you've already put advertising in place into into whatever journals your uh, your advertising your, your um your audience reads um you know put something up don't let them 404 um think about what people who uh, are coming to your your one page site think about it as a one page site and think about what people who are coming to that site might be wanting to find out um, and put that there think about how it dovetails with your publicity yeah thank you david all right then let's look i, I think we have a, a, another one let's have a look and see if it's there yes it is um priscilla vasquez um as a, a question is titled i want to promote my business in different cities priscilla said uh, hello all I have no search engine optimization knowledge, so I would really appreciate your help on this. I want to promote my business in different cities. Is it okay to create a Google business listing in every major city? Um, uh, that's a no. So under Google guidelines, <coughs> it's either a physical address or an address that is not shown, but you serve. So in this instance, you'd be a service area business, assuming you're not just online, because of course, if it's online, then it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's against guidelines. Uh, and when you say several, you know, several different cities, the other point is, is with service area businesses, it specifically states within a two hour drive. So like, you saying half of america or whatever it's like no nah. pick the ones which are closer to you because you obviously have centroids you know you have a little map if you pick like north america or whatever you have some stupid ass outline going around the thing it makes no sense to users when they google you anyway um but uh you know then again with guidelines it says within two hours so you know i would you know <laughs> like a city is a, a shed load of people. A city is a lot of people. Like, pick pick the one you're in, obviously, right? Set it up as a service area business and start with that city. And and have it as a service area business, because I'm assuming you from your own, like if you say several different cities, I'm assuming you're home-based, right? So have it as a service area business serving that city okay now and i'm assuming there's a lot of people so start there firstly as you start grow as you start to grow because just chucking stuff in different cities is not going to mean you're going to have better exposure it, it doesn't it's just not the way it works and as you start getting a handle on marketing in your own city and actually start and then you want to expand pick the next closest city right create a location page for that city right so <clears throat> in terms of your site and your business you are xyz starting in that city get to grips with that first like chucking in different cities is is just not going to help anyone uh and, and and not yourself either because you know you're going to have to be creating location or city city city-wide pages for that um, and just creating a citywide page for XYZ service is not necessarily going to rank. And if that's not ranking and Google doesn't see you as a business there, your GMB listing is not going to. So my best advice to you is to get your head around first, actually doing a service area business for the city you live in and marketing your entire business as a city you live in. If for some reason you're in some kind of small city and nobody wants, I don't know what you do, pink fluffy elephants, right? Because you're living in a, you're living in somewhere where it's like a retirement village and they've done their pink fluffy elephant days, right? Then, then yeah, fine. Pick it and have your service area as the, the next city with a younger demographic that's going to want to buy pink fluffy elephants, okay? 
But what I'm saying is get to grip on, get to grips with your first one first uh, before you start, you know, having to work through. Now, remember, you're going to have to work through optimizing and building and working through con and things on seven, several different cities at one time. Get to grips on your first one. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right. I've got a feeling this is the end of our evening. Yes, it is. It's, thank you for watching time. Um, I've, I've, I've got to thank, before we go, uh, um, all of the people who uh, answer questions on uh, um, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. You make it such a, a valuable uh, resource. I, there's just so many this week that I won't try to re read them all out because I'm certain I'll miss somebody. But I, I can thank um, you guys um, because I know exactly who you are. Um, about nine or ten years ago, we started this journey. And we're still on it, still on that road. Um, Masataki Wasa, um, David Roseanne, Tim Kappa, thank you very much. Um, we'll be back at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. But for now, it's um, good night. Um, uh.